This is the Project Management Podcast. We bring project management topics to beginners and experts. Find us on the web at www.thepmpodcast.com or send your emails to pmpodcast at gmail.com. Hello and welcome to episode number 90. I am Cornelius Fichtner. This is the Project Management Podcast for the 8th of March 2008. Nice to have you with us. In episode number 62, I spoke with Thomas Cutting about how to become a project manager, and he really laid it out for us then. In today's interview with Nami E. Abuzaid, I will be looking more at the middle of your career. You are now an established project manager, you have managed a number of projects, and you are hopefully respected in your company because, you know, you have successfully completed them, and you're now thinking about your future. Where can you go? What is there waiting ahead of you? Nami makes the case that because you are a project manager, because because you meet and have to work with so many people from so many departments and divisions in your company, and because you have seen so many aspects of the company's processes and workflows, you are an excellent candidate to become an executive officer in your company. But before we get into the interview, I have one announcement and one piece of news for you. Today's project management podcast is once again sponsored by Genius Inside, an award-winning provider of collaborative project management software since 1996. Genius Insight solutions are easily and extraordinarily customizable and support all the key components of successful portfolio project management, from planning and tracking to detailed reporting and risk assessment. For more information, please visit GeniusInsight.com and from their homepage, click on the Product Tour button to get a complete overview of this extremely comprehensive PPM solution. Yes, once again, we have to announce the winners of a contest. And I have two names for you today because this year we had a leap year and on the 29th of February, we gave away two licenses of the Project Management Prepcast. And here are the names of the winners. We have Patrick O'Neill and Rajiv Kumar Sharma. Patrick is a winner from among the subscribers of the Premium Podcast and Rajiv from among the registered users of our website. Each has won one license to the PM Prepcast, which will now help them to prepare for their PMP exam. But I haven't heard from them yet. So, gentlemen, I wrote to you. I'll let you know that you've won. If you hear this, please get in touch with me so that I can set you up in our system. Thank you so much. Today's helpful resource is a piece of news that I found on eweek.com, which fits nicely with the interview that you'll hear in just a moment. This um, is about a uh, salary report, a salary survey that was done by Tech Republic and Global Knowledge, and they surveyed IT professionals on topics from job satisfaction to training. But the really exciting data here is, of course, well job surveys. It's about salary, right? So the really exciting bit is the money and which certifications are associated with the biggest salaries. And not for the first time and also not surprisingly, the PMP certification brings home the most and the CAPM is just right behind it. So in this survey, as a PA, uh, PMP in the United States, uh, I suppose, you earn around 101,000 US dollars and the CAPM is just about $500 below that. So, um, I have one gripe with this salary survey, but also there's one good thing. The gripe that I have for this is, it's an IT survey. 
Dear surveyors, would you please understand that there is more to project management than just IT, and the salaries in IT are generally a bit higher. So yes, this is good still, even though it's in IT, because it shows to us project managers that the PMP and the CAPM certification are valued, and that if you have it, it will raise your salary. Nevertheless, it would be great to see such a survey done on uh, a few more industries than just IT. They also looked at a few others. For instance, CompTIA's Project Plus is also on there, but it's only 21st,、uh, making about、uh, 70,000 US dollars of salary. And then they looked at others, the ITIL V2 Foundation, which is at 95,000. And then we get into the really, really IT ones like the CISSP,、uh, which is the、uh, Certified Information System Security Professional, also at 94. Cisco CCIE. Routing and switching at 93, and there is something I've never heard of the CCVP.、Uh, so there are a lot of is a lot of information here about salaries and how much you can expect to make. But for us, the good news is PMP valuable to have, and it will raise your salary. And now our main topic: the discussion with Nami Abuzaid about using project management as a career stepping stone into the boardroom. Nami is a project manager and corporate strategist for the Las Vegas Sands Corporation, a company that has helped redefine the business model of Las Vegas resorts in recent years. In his work at the Venetian Las and、uh, Las Vegas Sands, Nami has gained a reputation for successfully leading complex, mission critical technology projects. In addition, he also holds the PMP certification. In an effort to round out his hotel casino management skills, Nami participates in the Venetian's leadership development program. This is a highly selective program that trains leaders for the company's future. So, without further ado, here's the interview with Nami Abuzaid, PMP. The Project Management Podcasts feature interview today with Nami E. Abuzaid. Corporate strategist for the Las Vegas Sands Corporation. Hello, Nami, and welcome back to the program. Thank you for having me, Cornelius, once again. A few episodes ago, actually, quite a number of episodes ago, I spoke to Thomas Cutting about how to become a project manager. And our discussion today is sort of the continuation of that. With Thomas, we looked at the beginning of your career. You've just come out of school, and how do you now move into project management? And the discussion today is more at the middle, towards the end of your career as a project manager, because. Your intention, Nami, is you want to move out of project management. You want to move from project management into the executive branch. So why? Why would a project manager want to change? Well, I think、uh, for me, I never saw myself as a project manager being the 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 be all, the end all of my career.、Uh, mainly because、uh, my career sort of. Uh, happened in a funny way, going from business school, where I, I got an MBA, where I knew I was looking at either being an entrepreneur or trying to run a company、uh, of however size, whether large, medium, or small. But that's really the goal of a lot of people who who go for the MBA. But I saw project management. I was fortunate to find project management early on as sort of that first or second job out of business school, as a good way to take business. Management skills or management training, and apply it, you know, with a company f- to find a niche right away, and to try to get early successes with a company. So, project manager was my first job out of business school with a major company, and a way to demonstrate to them that I could basically be the CEO of a project from beginning to end, and to have a success. 
and to build on that success. And early on, it it led to more projects, more assignments. But in the long run, you know, my goal is to make it lead towards you know the the boardroom. Um, and I think I think a lot of people, a lot of your listeners, probably share that that goal. And uh, I just like to talk about you know how to get there. You mentioned that as a project manager, from your point of view, you're the CEO of the project. I completely agree with that. That that is that is so true because once you're handed the project, you're it. You're on the line for it, right? Mm-hmm. So there are probably two types of of people who who are thinking along the same lines as you are. There's the the person who like you came out of business school, fell into project management and is using that to build his or her skill set and then move over into the executive branch. And then there are the people like myself, I, I really don't know where I'm going in the end with my career, of course, who who love project management, who are in project management, who have built the, the skill set and who are thinking about making a career change. And your argument is what you have learned as the CEO of the project will help you to move over into the executive branch, right? Yes, yes. You know, my project management um, experience and my sort of philosophy is basically just a bit rooted in the fact that anything worth doing is worth doing right. And there's a great quote from Abraham Lincoln that said, if I had six hours to cut down a tree, I'd spend four of those hours sharpening the ax. And it's it's about planning. It's just a simple little tale about planning. And, and project management allows businesses to do things, uh, to pull off things that, that may be not part of their core operations. And by doing it in a cohesive manner, by following that task list, that project plan, by, by that critical path, that, that's a valuable skill set to have. Whether it's managing a department of 90 people, whether it's managing a manufacturing company or, or just a, a technology company, I think the skills are very transportable. And what project management gives you the opportunity to do, especially when you join a big company, is right away lead cross-functional teams, be at the, at the table with decision makers when important projects and decisions have to be made. It gives you exposure to executives, C-level executives, senior executives, vice presidents. It uh, basically gets them to know your name. And if you're affiliated with a successful project, you almost have a halo effect for a while. Okay, They, they say, hey, that's Nami. He did that successful project six months ago. I want him. Though They might ask for you by name. Okay, So... I happen to have an MBA, and, and I also got the PMP credential, but that those were more incidentals. They weren't cause and effect. Um, but now I get as many uh, compliments on the PMP as I do on the M- MBA because PMP is such a hot certification right now, and it's such a skill set that's in demand. So what I tried to do after I joined my company four years ago is immediately express my goal to brought, to, to be in general management at the end of the day. And I helped them start a management training program. And I was lucky enough to be the first one selected into that program. And I helped them design it. And I helped them write the curriculum. And that was done through our HR department. So as I was managing projects in IT, four days a week, one day a week, I was doing a a rotational management program. And I think the MBA sort of was the driver of that. But also having the PM, uh, knowing I had broader people management skills, help me get selected for that as well. So what I would recommend to people is to look for those management training programs within your company, express an interest in them, try to get in one of those programs, and then let people know you're, you see yourself as more than just a project manager, but that you'd rather be an executive who knows project management rather than just a project management executive. Because mm-hmm. Cornelius, you might be aware, a lot of companies don't have director of project management or VP of project management office. Most companies don't have those titles. Yeah. And the few that do, um, you know, offer some great upward mobility for project managers. But, you know, I, I don't think every Fortune 500 company has, you know, that level uh, of, of attention it pays to project management as a function, as a title, as a business unit. I like your approach of of changing your own internal thinking, of not saying, oh, I'm a project manager who wants to be an executive. No, turn it around. I'm an executive who currently works 
as a project manager. Now, when I look at the qualities that you need as a project manager and as an executive, I see I see major differences here. As the project manager, you're task oriented, you're result oriented. And and the executive is more, you know, strategic thinking, business development. That's where where you have to be. How how would you say we as project managers who are really in this this task oriented results deliverables oriented world how do we change our mind and and turn around and say no 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 next to that I also need to be you know the innovator the the strategic thinker how do I get there first of all if you're managing a a P and L, a pro, you know, profit and loss statement. If you're managing an apartment that is responsible for revenue and making budget, then much of what you do has a beginning, has an end. It has uh, all the components of a good project plan, sort of uh, planning, initiation, uh, controlling, monitoring, those kind of things. You do that on a daily basis with a business, okay? Whether it's a hotel business or a restaurant business or a technology business, where some of the Jobs at the at the C level um, in in businesses have to do with corporate strategy. Um, certainly, those are more put on your thinking cap type positions, and may some of those deliverables may not be as quantifiable as those deliverables on a project management plan. But if you are if you seek to run a business unit from a vice president level and and manage a profit and loss statement, those what you do can definitely be helped by project management because you're talking about risk. You're talking about performance. You're talking about monitoring performance. You're talking about making incremental improvements. Um, you're talking about adhering to deadlines. You're talking about quality control. All those things that are part of good project management is part of good business management. And the key thing with that is, um, you need to just position yourself and market yourself within a company that, hey, I did this on this project. What makes you think that I can't do it um, permanently or, or in a regular fashion, quarter after quarter? And uh, I think the biggest thing with project managers is they're either seen as you know, IT project managers, mm-hmm. which happens to be the most projectized department is IT, construction project managers, um, you know, if there's some finance project managers out there. But basically, you know, you're confined to your function and you have to break out of that. And you break out of that by leading cross-functional teams and showing great leadership, not just showing, uh, you know, pushing IT tasks to completion. It's about showing leadership and it's really solving business problems. Um, under constraints. And that's what, you know, I've encountered my projects is when you have an accountant on your project team and you establish credibility with that accountant that you know a little something about accounting, then they start to rely on you more and think of you more as a leader of the project and of the project's success and or failure. And they start to rely on you and value your opinion when you establish credibility whether it's somebody who's an accountant or somebody who's a CFO or somebody who's uh, an operational manager uh, at the line level. You, you need to establish credibility. And once you do that, um, they start to regard you as more of a leader rather than merely um, you know, by your function. Let's assume that I want to take your advice and I want to take the step and move into an executive position. How important is my educational background? You have an MBA. I don't have an MBA. Is it important for me now to go back to business school and, and, and brush up on that and, and actually, you know, change my career and, and, and take that step? I, I don't think the payback on MBA degrees are as uh, immediate as, as the media would like to, you know, like to hype it. Uh, the 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 payback on an MBA is decades long. It's not right away. Um, oftentimes, it doesn't help you get a better job right away. It doesn't help you get a new job right away. It doesn't transform you from um, an entry level employee to a senior level employee. But it is um, an important stepping stone. It's a feather in your cap. Uh, it is a great way to uh, market yourself. But it, but the reason why I went back is to get those skills in finance and accounting that I didn't have because I had a liberal arts background. 
I wanted to get the hard skills because I felt I had the soft skills, the people skills, the communication skills. I didn't have the money skills, the number skills, uh, the analytical skills. So I went back for that. To me, it's more than a piece of paper. It was the best two years of my life, and I learned a lot that informs my decision-making today. But what I think about an MBA is it's not – it's not if you get your MBA, it's how you get your MBA. If you spend 30 years in business, I feel you'll get more than enough of what the two years in business school showed you. Or So basically, you can choose to get your MBA up front by doing two years and out, or you can choose to get your MBA on the back end, which is spending many, many years in business. And either way, you're going to get MBA level exposure to business principles. But... Um, I chose to get my MBA up front and do two years and out. It was a tough two years, but uh, I got it done, and now I, I feel better about it. But people who spend years in an industry and who move up the managerial ranks are, are going to get that MBA, just in a different format. Um, but I just think that what I've noticed in four years of project management, specifically in, in, in the industry I've been with, um, I feel that some of the techniques and some of the principles you learn through the PMI um, and the PMP exam are just just core business fundamentals that are exportable to general management and that, that can be used on the job, whether it's a, let's see, um, a risk plan, whether it's a communications plan, whether it's a... Uh, you know, a responsibility matrix, a good little tool. Who's got responsibility on a project? Who's advising? Who's consulting? Who's who's making the final decision? Those kind of things. I mean, those are excellent in general on how to run a business, not just confined to just project management. So I think that toolkit is very valuable. So you get to market yourself within your company, market yourself with your HR department, know that the skills you have are transportable. Um, but you also always have to get... Um, what is your subject matter uh, expertise in? You always need to be a specialist in some sort, even though I feel PM is, is very general and can be PM in any industry. So uh, those are my tips. I mean, those, the, that's what I've tried to do, cultivate with myself. I would say, hey, I'm a generalist. I'm a generalist project manager and strategist, um, and here's what I bring to the table. Um, and, and here are my successes as a project manager, and I think those successes are expandable. And exportable. Do you know of another project manager who's had the same idea and wanted to move over into executive, uh, the executive branch? You know, it's funny. I, I, in my company, um, and in my experience, I haven't met too many that I think I met a lot of project managers who go into consulting, mm -hmm. who, who, who incorporate and all of a sudden say, I'm a, I'm a project management consultant. I have a project management company, but they still see themselves as a project manager. And I always, I never saw myself. I always, right off the bat, I said, like I said, I'm, I'd prefer to be an executive with, with a project management background rather than a project management executive. But, I, you know, I did learn in business school that it's really, not, you don't get where you need to go in business by deserving it. You get to it by, by forcing the issue and, and, You know, and rebranding yourself. And I learned that from, I mean, our, our company's president, Sheldon Adelson, uh, he's, he founded the company and, uh, from humble beginnings. And, and he saw himself as a business person, you know, out to profit as a business person. And he never let labels get in the way. And so basically all I've tried to do is say, let people know early on upon first meeting, whether I had zero years of experience or 20, I would say, I see myself as an executive. I don't, you know, rather than a project manager. So, so that's how, and, and maybe it's rubbed some people the wrong way, but, but I think that's in the end, um, you, you keep knocking on doors. Um, it's, it's, and you're going to succeed. Mm -hmm. All right. So you've positioned yourself. Mm -hmm. You've told everyone I'm an executive, not mm -hmm. a project manager. Mm -hmm. You've worked with your HR department. Mm -hmm. You've got your, your MBA. Mm -hmm. You've taken the internal management training classes. Mm -hmm. All right. What's next? What is the next step that you yourself are going to take mm -hmm. in order to move where you want to be? Well, right now, I think um, at this point and in this point in my career and in, in my life and also just in general, I think it's really important to start to network um, and build those relationships. As a project manager, like I said, within a company, within an industry, you're exposed to 
all these people, cross-functional people, whether they're vice presidents, whether they're, they're maybe they're a project sponsor, okay? If you do a project for a, a business unit in your company that, okay, you may, you don't interact with on a daily basis, okay? But you do it successfully. They know your name. They know your, your success record. All of a sudden, you have a, you built a personal relationship with that person, albeit a professional one, but you built a personal network. That's your network, okay? All of a sudden, his unit's growing, okay? He's got a manager level position. He's got a director level position. All of a sudden, who's he looking for? He's looking to fill it with somebody who knows the business, knows the company you're in. And all of a sudden, you express interest in a position. He doesn't have to pay a recruiter to fill that position. He doesn't have to endure months and months of interviewing. He has somebody that he knows is successful. And, and you've told him you have skills and interests that fall mm-hmm. in his department. So really, I think networking, building your network, and expressing interest in certain positions that are open, and also identifying what, what – um, what business is within your company you're interested in. And maybe you're interested in marketing. Maybe you're interested in finance. Okay. If you want to position yourself in one of those departments, okay, you need to sort of build a, build an interest level in that. And you need to know when a job becomes available that you want that job. And, and so it's really networking and then knowing what you want. Mm-hmm. You're really talking about just career management and career marketing, right? Yes. Yes, and, and the reason I'm espousing that is because I've seen that for me, when I entered Hotel Casino business, my CIO who hired me, I worked directly for the CIO, he said, you're going to love being in IT because IT touches every part of the business. He also said, you're going to love being a project manager because project managers spend more of their time outside of IT and they interact with everybody from the business. So in a short amount of time, I was able to do projects with everybody from the president of the company down to, you know, line level team members. And that he was right. In a year, I knew everybody in the company and I, and I had either worked with them on a project or led them on a project. And um, uh, just based on that, my personal network within the company after a year was as good as somebody who'd spent, you know, five, ten years in accounts payable or finance or something who who never got out of their cubicle. So that's why I'm, I'm such a fan of project management positions because it it really allows you to lead people early on in a, in a generalist or specialist type manner. And I think it's a great career builder. It's been a great career builder for me. I think uh, anywhere I go now, um, it, it's going to have that halo effect of having been with a successful company, managing successful projects. I just think that, um, you know, I think there's a lot of your listeners out there who um, are probably in the same boat. Uh, you're going to get rejection. You're going to get doors slammed in your face. You're going to get people who want to pigeonhole you as a project manager in one capacity or another. But at the end of the day, you know that, that the fundamentals of project management are exportable uh, to other areas of the business. You really got to believe that. I believe it after four years of, of project management um, in my industry. Uh, and so I'm ready to take off. I'm ready to go into other areas. And, uh, uh, and, and that's where I'm probably sort of midstream in that, in that quest. One question that I had written down here is, and, and you've pretty much answered it already, why would an up-and-coming executive even want to bother with project management. But you've just said it. As a project manager, you're out there. Mm-hmm. You see the company. You meet the company. You, you, can, you can do more than anyone in a regular management position who has a cubicle, who has an office, who has a certain area mm-hmm. of the company that they're responsible for. That's all they'll ever see. But as the project manager, you go out, you see how the company works. You work with people cross-functional. Mm-hmm. I had never seen it that way. You, you know, I got into project management as a means to an end. I wanted to get in with a growing company, uh, Las Vegas Sands, in a growing industry, hotel, casino. This was my sole means to do that without having had hotel, casino industry experience. Uh, it was a nice way to drop me in and I'll, I'll right of a way give me some authority and some responsibility and so for me it was a necessary entree into the business but i also think if somebody has the option of doing it i think it's 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 a good option as well 
What's your final recommendation to the project managers out there who have now realized that, man, yeah, I am in a good position. I could do this. Where should they start? I would, I would take a, a hard look at themselves and find out what they're interested in and, and how they see themselves. Do they see themselves as somebody who wants, if they're in IT, for example, do they want to get to the top job in IT? Or do they want to use what they've learned to get the top job somewhere else? I myself, uh, because my lack of a, of a technical background, I know I may never get to be CIO, um, even though, you know, nowadays a lot of CIOs come from the MBA type background. But I know that maybe I'll never be a CIO because of my lack of technical background. I know maybe I won't have that credibility. But I know that everywhere, every time I'm in a boardroom talking about business, Having that IT experience, having been within IT, uh, gives me credibility within you know those other uh, top executives. So I feel um, they need to take a hard look at themselves, find out what they really want, and then how they want to position themselves. Um, and that that's really key. Maybe they want the best job in their department. Maybe they just want to move up to the, the next rung. Um, you know, project management is a point where it's mature in business. More businesses are talking about project management regardless of the industry. Uh, they value the, the methods that they use. Uh, they know it's, it's essential for business success. And um, it, it's something that, that if packaged the right way, it's a set of skills that can take, tell recruiters and people in hiring positions that this person um, knows how to manage uh, projects or business units from beginning to end towards a goal. And whether that goal is increased profits, whether that goal is reduced costs, maybe that goal is something as ambitious as opening a $3 billion hotel. But those tasks and those uh, uh, processes are, are so similar um, and they're so uh, exportable that um, you know project management is almost like an MBA. It's like you either get it up front or you get it down the road. You, you're going to do project management. You're going to use it on the job. You either learn it formally or you're, you kind of learn it as you go. But you're going to you're, you're not going to escape it. So I think embrace it. Embrace project management. Embrace your, if you're a project manager, your skills that you've learned, that you've earned. And just, it's all about marketing from here on out. Nami, thank you so much for talking to us today. You've, you've made me into a believer. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, and I, I enjoy the podcast, and, and I use it to keep, keep, uh, keep topical and keep timely in, in the industry. So, uh, you know, on behalf of your listeners, I know that we all thank you for, for putting it together each week. And that was our interview with Nami E. Abu Zaid. That's it for today. Thank you so much for listening. As always, you can find us on the web at thepmpodcast.com. And if you are a project manager who wants to become PMP certified, and as we've heard, it pays to do so, you can visit pmprepcast.com. In this podcast, we teach you concepts, tools, and techniques that you need to know in order to pass your PMP exam. Please send your emails to pmpodcast at gmail.com. And as always, when you write, please tell me where in the world you are writing from. And finally, we have this. I'd like to introduce you to Völkes Law. And Völkes Law goes something like this. Nothing gets done until nothing gets done. Uh, what does he mean by that? By that he means that project managers will not get the staff that they need as long as we muddle through with overtime, ulcers and our superhuman efforts to keep our projects on track. Only when deadlines are finally missed, then senior management will, will step up and they will finally approve the staff that we need. And if they had approved this staff on the outset, we would never have missed the deadlines. So there's Wilke's law for you. Nothing gets done until nothing gets done. Until next time.